What do you have, Kelly? Bring it here. Bring it here. What do you have? Let it go. Hold your feet. Put your boots on. Right? It's minus uh, 20 something Celsius this morning. It was minus 43, I think, with the wind chill overnight. So it's uh, a little crispy with the wind. So what I'm going to do is get this wood here. This is hardwood stuff that I milled two years ago when I first got the mill. At least two years then. Yeah, probably three years March maybe or summer. Two and a half years. <laughs> so it's good and dry other than the fact that it's been in the elements. But it's maple and ash, oak, uh, beech. Not sure what else. Different thicknesses. So I'm going to grab what I can and see if I can get a kitchen made out of this stuff. But anyway, I'm going to get it inside and let it thaw for a couple of days first. So that little spot where the bed used to be and where Kelly's bed is, I'll stack some some of this there and let it thaw. And then make something in a few days. I'm going to go ice fishing for a couple of days. So when I get back, we'll do that. Kelly, I see you. I see the orange. You have to bring it here if I'm going to throw it. Are you ready? <laughs> love to get a burn built so I can get all this wood put away. Hey, 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 don't leave it. It's so cold that the leather rope on there on the Kelly's toy it was uh, wet, I guess. Rolled solid. And when I went to throw it this morning, it literally shattered into little pieces. That's how cold it is. But I'm overdressed. I've got long underwear on, which I never wear pair of wool pants and I've got two layers of sweater and a little thermal underwear layer underneath. Just my work gloves. They're warm enough. They're not warm but they're warm enough for working. Hey everybody, welcome back to the cabin. I think this is a good day to do a refresher on the clothing for cold weather video that I did, f what, four or five years ago at the old cabin. It was a day like this, I think, where it was minus 30 or 40. And uh, people were really curious about what I wear in those temperatures and what they should be wearing when they go out into the outdoors. Now it's gonna be different for everybody and I can tell you one thing, I'm a meat eater, I eat a lot of meat. A lot of fat and protein in the winter especially and I burn really hot so uh, I would dress at least one layer warmer than what I do at this time of year especially uh, but for the same reason I kind of overheat in summer so you have an advantage over me at that time of year if you're leaner than I am and uh, eat less I burn at least 3,500 calories a day at this time of year especially if I'm working like cutting firewood or doing what I'm doing outside cutting firewood and hauling and uh, digging out that lumber and um, I also back at the truck got stuck and because <laughs> of all the snow and cold weather I had to dig it out with an axe uh, it's the problem with letting it sit but anyway uh, those days uh, maybe I burned more than 3500 calories but I would say that's probably the average um, if it's a slower day I'm not doing as much maybe I'm down to 2500 or 3000 but that's my number one tip I would say for dealing with warm weather is to eat, eat properly, eat lots. If you're going to bed, like if you're sleeping outside, like cold camping, especially like I used to do, we were just sleeping in a, like, a, well, I'd use my, personally, I would use a sleeping bag inside a bivy and I would just sleep on a sleeping pad, but right on the ground with no cover really. Might put a shelter, like a tarp over my head in case it snows or something, but that's uh, cold camping because it's not a, you're not inside the, inside it in a closed area that's heated so whatever the outdoor temperatures are that's what you're breathing in i like sleeping like that i like to have just my head out or have the uh, mummy sleeping bag kind of close me my face even with just a small opening to breathe and uh, just breathing in that cold air i find refreshing so in those cases you really 
want to make sure that you hydrate so you drink plenty of water and you eat plenty before bed so that your body is metabolizing it's burning those that uh, food as it uh, digests to, to keep you warm now the problem with that is often you have to get up in the middle of the night to pee or worse <laughs> so that's uh, tip number one anyway um, tip number two is just layers lots and lots of layers I gotta move I'm gonna film over here hopefully the lighting's not too bad but I'm standing by the stove and I'm roasting all right that's a little better I'm gonna take this hat off though even though <laughs> I'm growing my hair and my beard out for the winter and getting a little disheveled looking this is just a basic polyester hat I guess what is it not uh it's not a warm hat acrylic and 30 30 percent wool with a polyester lining not horrible but it's really thin it's not very warm but for me like i said i overheat so when i'm active i'm wearing more well fewer layers but i'm layered up but i'm wearing some thinner layers so that i can get down to a pretty thin layer so that's not giving me much uh, heat retention um, so this thin hat works fine on a day like this where I'm working hard. Uh, sweater. Well, okay, I'll start at the outer layer. So in this weather, like I said, I'm working, I'm layered up. So the outer layer is something that stops the wind and prevents moisture if it gets warm out or from your body heat um, heating up whatever snow lands on you. Now, even if it's not snowing, and it is today, but there's a lot of snow blowing off the trees. So just walking through the forest and brushing up against stuff, you're gonna get soaked. So lots of snow on it. So, so this is an oil skin. This happens to be made by Outback. Outback Trading Company down in the US. Now what I like about that company is they're actually pretty cheap compared to more expensive brands that have similar products. Like let's say Filson or something like that. Hidden the same style would probably be double the price there. So I find Outback reasonable for the quality that you get. I've been working this jacket pretty hard for three years. I'm seeing I get a little bit of rips here where I'm handling wood. But um, I haven't oiled this actually. I waxed it for probably t at least two years. In fact, I should do that today. But so heavy oil skin, so wax uh, canvas with a liner on the inside. That's just like hardly any insulation there. I can feel a little bit. This is called the Deer Hunter anyway, if you want to look it up on their website just to see what the specs are. The only thing, I don't know if it, I guess it didn't have a hood. They, I have the rain slick as well. So it's the, uh, what do you call those things? The, anything, things you would wear riding a horse, big slick kind of thing. That has a hood on it and some shoulder things for extra protection. That's good in the rain. You've seen me wear that in the matching pants. So basically matching pants to this as well. That sheds water. So that's on my outer layer. If it gets a lot colder, I'll switch out all of this outer layer for a snowmobile suit, like a one piece snowmobile suit that's really heavy and actually has flotation in it. So that flotation is providing flotation if I fall through the ice, especially on the snowmobile. And it also acts as an insulation layer. So it's, it's quite warm and being one piece, all your body heat is trapped within this one unit where this heat's escaping here, which I want because I need to layer, take things off. But if I'm stationary or on a, a snowmobile that's going at a relatively high speed, that wind chill, that uh, cold air hitting you is gonna wick away the heat from your body very quickly so that one piece really comes in handy and then it has a hood and also I'm wearing a helmet if I'm out and you know, off my property basically I never wear it here I should but I don't anyway that's full uh, system and in that case I wear heavier boots too I've got these bath and control max they're called really big heavy uh, boot with leather upper and a uh, rubber bottom and that has a nice liner inside that I can take out to dry at the end of the day. I'll show you the, what I'm wearing right now in a minute. So that's my odor there. Right now, I've got this heavy sweater. I think somebody gave this to me because I've never, I didn't buy this. I know that for sure. This is 100% wool and it is heavy, really thick. I've had something on it. Like it wasn't handmade, it's made by a brand, but. Anyway, that's better. This is, um, 
probably Bass Pro Shops maybe if I don't know how long I've had this 20 years probably it's just a thermal layer and what you're trying to do is have a layer on your body directly on your skin that wicks moisture instead of keeping you warm so it's allowing you to sweat it's uh, wicking that moisture through this garment to keep that moisture off your body because that's what um, that's um, the heat transfer through moisture through water is a lot more rapid than through air so or other um, materials so you want to get that moisture off your body so it doesn't make you cold and a layer like this allows that to moisture to wick out your perspiration to wick out and get maybe trapped in that or keep going if it's all um, open weave stuff like this normally what i wear is if i'm extremely rare for me to wear an under layer first of all this is probably the, my second time this year and it was minus 40 something this morning with the wind chill when i went out so i would, would prefer to wear wool so i like um what are the brands that i wear smart wool or icebreaker i guess they are so thinner but 100 percent merino wool so it does wick because it's nice and thin but also if it is damp it still keeps you warm so that's typical it typically goes with as much wool as possible no cotton in the winter um, synthetic layer at the base layer if i'm trying to just wick moisture and it's a cheaper option or it's just something what i happen to have from years ago so that's at every level or every part of your body head if it was really cold i'd be wearing okay <laughs> I'm getting all over the place trying to stick with the outer layer first so on my head if I'm not wearing something like that because it's cold oh, I don't even know where I've got a it's somewhere in the mess here I have a liner hat so same thing again just always think layers if you want to be the warmest have layers on every part of your body so on my head I have a little beanie that's pretty tight fitting I've got a couple of them ones a synthetic and one's a, a merino wool again and then over top of that I'll wear my warmest hat which is this one so this is down filled polyester cover real fur lining so fur is great because what it does is ends up trapping air around your face so it stops the air from moving as much I can't hear you now <laughs> But that fur, just the lining like that, is kind of creating a seal to keep it in. But it ends up keeping the air kind of static, from, keep it from moving. So this, you end up with the heat coming off your body and kind of collecting in the fur. And the furrier it is, the more you've got all this stuff around your face, the more it traps it right there. It's amazing, especially, like I said, if you're sleeping. And like if I wanted to sleep outside with no sleeping bag over my head, I could just wear this. And have that like that and the air that just kind of hangs right there keeps me warm keeps me uh, from breathing in that cold air directly into my lungs so that's really warm and if i have a like i said a thin you know, liner underneath that just like un almost unbearably warm it's all the warmth that i need even like sitting ice fishing in minus say 25 or something minus 30 celsius uh, that's still comfortable okay so that's those layers now again where did i put my liner gloves thin thin gloves like a nylon 100 percent nylon or polyester really thin or again ideally really thin wool gloves like merino wool they're not going to be durable that's the problem with those nylon's a little bit more durable because what i'll do is have that inside gloves like this or inside a mitt that's the warmest is to have a little thin liner inside a heavier mitt is the more you can keep your fingers and everything together the more they're going to help retain warmth or share that warmth as soon as you separate them into a glove like that now you have five digits on each hand that have to keep that warmth in themselves and that's almost impossible with especially a tight fitting glove like this now these are work gloves i get away with this even on a day like this working outside when i'm active if i'm not active if i'm stopped just filming or photographing or ice fishing or something my fingers will freeze in these too so my solution is to be wearing these whenever i'm working have that liner so, so let's say i catch a fish i take that off i've got the liner i can still handle things if it's really cold without my fingers freezing and then if i get them wet um, that wicks away pretty quickly i can dry them over fire or whatever pretty quickly these are never going to dry so 
I'll have at least two pairs of these on me at all times if this is what I'm going with. Um, I protect this with the with the uh, bare fat and beeswax. So I just oh, get that on the outside. I just put that all over the place and on my boots as well. Anything leather, I'm basically putting this stuff on all the time. So that's creating a, a waterproof barrier, much like the oil skin. So now the water is wicking off of this instead of instead of absorbing into the leather. Now I find that this makes them slightly colder, not as cold as if they were wet and then frozen, but it does kind of seal up the pores a little bit so they don't breathe quite as well. So you can get some sweating on your on your hands that affects the, the, the uh, warmth of them. So, uh, again, if I'm snowmobiling, definitely have a liner with snowmobile mitts, which the ones I have <laughs> somewhere down in the cellar, maybe they're split like that. And at least you have you can you're a little bit more uh, nimble. A little bit more dexterity by having them split like that so you have now three ways to handle things like three sort of digits i guess instead of just two instead of a big mitt with all four of your fingers and then your thumb so it's a lot easier to when you have split fingers so those are really warm though they're fine them warm enough even snowmobiling at minus 30 with wind chill as i'm doing 30 miles an hour <laughs> sure but he loves how i jump back and forth between metric and standard um, Okay, that's that layer. So this, people, of all the things that I wear regularly, I get questions on these all the time. People think they're snowmobile pants, but what they are, it's just a, a rain pant. This is just something I got at, again, I think Bass Pro Shops years ago. It has Gore-Tex fabric in the inside, so that's waterproof, relatively waterproof, and windproof, and allows moisture to wick out so I have a uh, jacket that sort of matches this as well same brand and same bought at the same time each time like 10 years ago or whatever it's amazing they've held up because I'm using them as a work pack so it's kind of like a like a Carhartt overall coverall but amazing like like I said it's I've been wearing it forever that is mainly for that is to keep moisture Keep moisture out basically and wind so that can go over everything it's not insulated so it's not providing um, insulation insulated value but it's just keeping the wind from wicking my my heat away and moisture from getting in. take these off overheating here close to the stove minus like i said i think without wind chill it was minus 33 i think overnight didn't get down below what, 12 or 14 degrees or something of that far corner away from the stove so it is warm in here there you go <laughs> okay no 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 that's it oh, i know I'll feed, I'll feed you in a minute all right so <laughs> wool pants Emily got me these wool pants for Christmas actually. They're cargo pants, they're Big Bill I think is the brand. I've never worn them before or, or had or never worn wool. I hadn't worn wool pants for 30 years. Somebody gave me a pair for hunting that many years ago at the archery club that I used to belong to. These are great, like 24 ounce, so really heavy wool. And again, wool keeps you warm. So it's, it's got a lot of insulation itself. It like it traps air in there so it keeps you warm but it also stays um, effective if it gets damp so from your sweat from the inside or water getting on them from the outside especially melting snow so these I'm finding too warm for this actually well it's because I've got three layers on which I never wear like I said I think I think this is my second time this year wearing long underwear so I have thermal long underwear underneath they're not thermal but they're uh, merino wool just a really thin layer you can get different thicknesses different weights of fabric and i'm wearing what is it 200 is that the lightest one by icebreaker so merino wool bottoms so that goes 
Head to ankles base or waist to ankles. Pants over top. He said too warm typically. Well there they are. Okay, so there's the underwear. These are wool socks. No, these are fleece socks by the feel of it. Again, because I was active, I didn't worry about wool so much, but almost always just try to get 100% wool on the bottom or the outer layer. This is 100% wool liner, it's icebreaker, and it's just a really thin sock basically, like almost like a dress sock. I mean, really thin, but 100%. Well, I gotta check that. It's probably like 70% merino wool, a little bit of nylon in there for stretch and for keeping it up. So I've got maybe four or five pairs of those and I rotate them and they're good forever. Like telling you these things, when you buy them quality and you take care of them will last you 20 or 30 years. Um, especially if you're just using them when you need them. But I find the liners really hold out the outer socks, not so much. But what I've done is bought enough. When I shop now, people get a little, Disconnected, I think, because they know I've made some money over the years and I have more money than most, I guess, off gridders or starting off outdoors people. But I was young and poor. <laughs> when I was young, I was poor. And I've been poor on and off over the years, relatively. And I just buy the things that make sense at the time when I can afford them and then I try to make them last. But good quality gear. There's lots of things you'll see me with that I've had for decades or more that, that's probably more than 10 years those pants that jacket was given to me these brands always reach out trying to get me to test their stuff and and uh, you know accept things that i would use regardless of whether they were i was paying for them or not and that's one of them that i that i have kept i paid for that that's crown they're a canadian company i think i just bought that and then they saw me wearing it and offered to send us more and i never really took them up on it but I do recommend it wool you can get wool sweaters like that at yeah uh, like goodwill type places like used clothing it doesn't have to be fancy it just has to be wool so you'll find them really cheap all the time I've got a couple like that that I've had for decades so I would wear snow pants if I were you but the layers work like my legs really heat up. I've got, I don't know, I'm 184 pounds on average, I would say, at this time of year, and I might drop down to like 175 when I'm lean and working actively and eating less in the summer. Um, so I have a high metabolism, and my legs in particular heat up really fast. So I generally have like one layer on, even when I'm working in minus 20. Minus 10 for sure, but only one layer. Anything more than that, it typically overheat. It's only when I stop and I'm ice fishing or something, or hunting, like sitting in a, a tree stand or on a ground blind or something, or just sitting on the ground, moving or moving really slowly hunting, I, I get cold then. So that's when I want to have those layers on. But I need to be able to strip off layers all the time. Um, well, I'll give you an example. So. Outdoor Survival Canada, I think the company's called, OSC. They sent my wife and I actually really good heavy coats through Cabela's, I think it was actually, like four years ago maybe. I've worn mine once or twice, but it's so warm and so bulky that I don't want to have that bulk with me most of the time for one thing. Is that what do I do when I take it off? And secondly, it's just so heavy that it's the only thing I can wear whether it's just a like a basic shirt underneath or I overheat and then if I take it off I'm cold so it doesn't really make sense to have one big bulky layer it makes way more sense to have multiple layers so if it was really cold and this has happened many times let's say I'm bow hunting for deer late season um would like in the places that I hunt here it's only open till the 15th of December but where I used to live it was December 31st and it would get quite cold some years so I'm sitting in a tree stand for example bow hunting sitting stationary for say two hours in the evening two hours the next morning and that is cold especially if I'm in an exposed spot with the wind like up on a tree stand or something so I'm going as many layers as possible so I go probably a t-shirt like a 100% wool t-shirt merino wool 
something like this, thermal, or another thin wool layer. And then either a sweater like that, but more typically like one of the vests that I wear. Um, so I've got a wool vest that would go on. So that's keeping my core warmer. I don't really need as much warmth in my arms, especially because I want that mobility to be able to draw a bow. And that keeps my torso warm. If I can keep it quiet enough, or if I'm just doing something like sitting around camping or ice fishing, the down jackets are the best, like the puffy jackets. So you get that thick, thick layer, especially an 800 fill. If you look for the, the higher the number, the more down you've got in there. So an 800 is, I think is awesome. Like I can wear an 800 fill over this in minus 20 or 30 and be warm enough actually. And because it's a puffy jacket that's down filled, you can crunch it down really small and always have it in your pack. So what I'll do is stick it in a Ziploc bag and have it in there all the time, compressed with all the air taken out of it. So it's like that big. And even on a spring canoe trip, I'll take the vest version of that. So it's aren't sleeveless. And again, you can, well, you can pack it down into its pocket. A lot of, a lot of them are designed that way. And that's always on me. That's like, prop. I would buy that almost first before I'd buy anything else. If I was uh, trying to outfit myself with warm clothing for as cheap as possible. Um, the problem with them is they're not durable. So I've, I've ripped them all the time and then I have to patch them. So you want something on the outside covering that up. Something like ripstop material like that or like a heavier coat or something. Anyway, that's the layer system. So t-shirt, this, vest puffy down jacket or sweater and then puffy or vest and then a uh, heavier outer layer that's blocking the wind because all of these things the wind's going to blow right through that on a day like today where it's 40 km an hour winds on top of the cold weather all right so that's all of that i'm going to show you a couple of things about hanging in the breezeway that puffy jacket and this uh, wool anorak that a russian guy made and sent me several years ago uh, footwear though so almost always you're watch, watching me wear leather hunting boots so I've gone through so many over the years some fairly expensive brands and some cheaper brands some like house brands like from the big box stores they're all basically made the same and probably in the same factories or same areas none of them are awesome and they break down so what I I broke down and ordered some boots from the US and I liked them enough even though they're really expensive that right now I've got more money and I have zero idea whether I'm going to have any money in the future. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to be physically and financially broke. I'm 52 now and anyway that's where I think I'm headed so I'm trying to get as many things inventory now as possible. The things that I know I will continue to use like socks and pants and things like that I've stockpiled. Anyway I'm um, Schneez is the company name and they're really expensive leather mountain hiking boots hunting boots and just amazing like I can't believe how durable they are and I use them in well you see where how I'm using them hunting fishing hiking walking through water but especially like working with wood and logging and all that stuff and they, they're just really durable they're holding up so I broke down and paid, bought a few extra pairs and I've got them stashed and I'll show you a future stash and I've got things like that in the cellar but they're what I was wearing right up until two days ago I'm still wearing them. I've got two two or three different weights of them actually summer weight and then winter weight but when it gets really cold you want a liner and yeah, this is a Baffin is the company again full disclosure they sent me several pairs of boots four or five years ago six years ago maybe even <laughs> to me these look like little boy boots but anyway they're warm enough and the liner is uh the, the beauty of the felt liner is that you can pull them out this is not really felt it's uh some synthetic material that wicks moisture and it's got some insulation obviously in there but the beauty of them is you can just take them out and hang them by the fire so i always have felt boots for cold weather and uh, that's what i do even uh what I used, to, I used to hunt in rubber boots, I forget the name of the brand, but uh, with liners in them and I'd have two liners on the go all the time. So for a full week hunting trip, I'd wear these rubber boots with the liners 
end of, end of the day, take them off, hang them by the fire, put the other fresh clean ones in, dry ones, and go and just keep rotating all week. Um, so yeah, that's what I love about liners. Now there's different thicknesses too, different weights. So these are kind of a mid-weight, um, rubberish or plastic sort of bottom. Uh, one of the keys with all these kind of boots is to have two, uh, yeah, I've got another one in there, foil one at the bottom. You're, where are you going to get cold? Like if you sit on ice and ice fish, as one example, and you're just sitting there even your foot on something that's keeping you elevated off the ice and it's maybe even insulated, you're not cold there, but your feet freeze. Just having your feet on the floor or on the cold ground or on the cold ice will make you very cold. So you think all these things, all the insulation up here is important. Having two or three layers underneath your foot is actually the most important. So a reflective layer in there, a little cushion layer, and then one in there too. No, not right now, but I normally do. I'll have uh, ideally like a sheepskin or a uh, wool woven like felt insole as well. So that keeps you warm. So Baffin, when they sent me these, they sent me another what? Well, those Control Max. So. They're somewhere too. I haven't worn them in a couple of years actually. It hasn't been cold enough. They're so warm that I can wear them anytime. But if I'm, I'll wear them actually in the next few days because I'm going back, way back up here with the snowmobile and a tent and going ice fishing. So I'll be sitting out and potentially getting a lot colder. So I'll wear those boots and I'll show you those in that video. Probably next week or the week after. No, but they're just up, leather upper, but a really, really thick liner that uh, again you remove it's so warm and it's more waterproof too like this is not a waterproof membrane where the baffin um, control max has a rubber upper i think it comes up a little bit further but then it's a full grain leather up here so it's waterproof enough as well and same thing i'll just put that on there especially on seams like all the stitching and everything that's where water can get in so i pack this this uh, bear grease and beeswax. I pack it into all the seams around everything. Same with the gloves, like I really concentrate on the seams. Uh, what else? Well, anything like that I do. All right, I'll show you quickly the other two things and then I'm gonna get back to work. Oh, got a few things in here, I guess. There's a wool vest. Can you see me in there? Yeah. That's a 100% wool vest. So again, keeps my torso warm, which is great. Another option is hoodies are good too because they keep the, again, keep the heat in. The, more, the less seams you have in anything, the less uh, water or air infiltration you're gonna have. So by having something like this with a hood that goes over, keeps your ears and your head warm because your body heat's rising up staying within the envelope and keeping you warm. <laughs> oh, right, my face is getting, that's what I mean. I get way overheated. I think it's, I've been keeping the fire down. It's 14 degrees Celsius, I think inside. There's that raincoat anyway by Outback. So that's what I wear in the, I can't wear it in the winter or in the summer. I'd rather just get rained on. But in the shoulder season, spring and, and fall, that's good because it's lined as well or not. No, it's just lined in the upper part here. But again, just raincoats tend to make you hold the sweat in, so they end up potentially making you damper and colder. Oh, here's my chainsaw pants for cutting firewood. There's a down vest. This is Eddie Bauer. I don't know. I've had this forever. It literally goes on every canoe trip. I just pack it right down into nothing, basically. Yeah, it even has, I think, a zipper on the outside. You literally just fold it like that and keep putting it inside its own pocket. And it ends up being this big when you're done. So you, no excuse not to always take it. And speaking of that, socks are really important. Your feet are going to freeze and so are your hands. I always bring multiple gloves and multiple pairs of socks. And I always put them in something waterproof, like a dry bag or some single use or... You can get several uses of it out of it, but a Ziploc freezer bag. 
is a good thing. I always have them in my bag too, in case I catch fish or something I want to keep in there to keep uh, from getting everything else dirty, but also mainly to keep things like that dry. Uh, throw some matches and lighters and stuff in Ziploc bags with that stuff as well. And here's that, here's that anorak I was talking about. Man, that's heavy, like heavy in weight and a really tight weave. Yeah, I don't even know how they get the weave that tight. And then it's got sort of mesh, sort of keep it off the body a little bit, but it's for strength and for pockets because the wool itself would just stretch and get out of shape. But again, a hood, but that's a tight weave wool. I'm, it feels like it's 100% wool. So that's again quite warm. I like it. Heavy, like I said. <laughs> Even Kelly, you want to go out? It's too hot in here, isn't it? She's, well, her feet are tender, so I've got that Musher's Secret um, stuff on her paws. It's just a, it's kind of like, well, I use this sometimes too, the beeswax and bears, bear grease to soak her or cover her paws in that so the ice and snow doesn't stick to it. And, uh, yeah, keeps her a little bit more comfortable, but it might be a day for the boots because I see her favoring her feet a little bit. Hey, you want to go back out, eh? Yeah. Hold on. All right, let's go. Up. Oh, no wonder it's 16 degrees Celsius in here. That's too warm. <laughs> if I'm sitting around, like not doing anything I gotta be careful with the stove that I don't get it too hot it is cold outside but on a day that's not quite as cold like you can see the windows are frosted up and when I get the stove going it starts melting off so I try to keep it at the point where it's not really doing that so I like the temperature less or cooler in here but I do when I'm sitting get it up to like 18 20 22 degrees if it gets out of control I'm gonna damp it down Anyway, this mass of this place, like everything just, once it heats up, it just retains the heat. I can let that fire go out, even in this temperature. I didn't stoke it the first night, too. Night before last was just as cold. And the next morning, I guess it was completely out. It was still, what, 14 degrees in here still. It just retains heat way better than the old cabin. Got the mass of everything, and I've got most of the joints kind of airtight now the door you, if you've been following along you know I'm carving the outside of that door and you can see some of the air through the the uh, boards there kind of where that insert is not coming right to the edge of that cutout section and there's some frost coming through there but other than that I think we're pretty much airtight so it uh, does once that place is warm it stays warm all right, we're gonna go outside, we're both dying. Yes, I'm coming, you're here outside, you just get excited today. <laughs> now, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, I'm not uh, brand loyal. I don't have any brand deals or or um, sponsorships or anything like that, so I'll just answer you honestly and what I use and what I recommend, what I've used over the years that I've been happy with. But other than that, I guess I'll see you next time in the cabin. Take care.